Hi, I'm Julie Usher. And in this video, we're making stuffable stocking cookies for Christmas. I love making cookies, but I particularly like making cookies that um, surprise people. And these cookies do exactly that in that they're stuffable. They've actually got cookie lollipops in them, some candies. And not only that, but they double as a Christmas decoration because they actually hang. In this video, I will be showing you how to assemble these, basically the component cookie pieces you need, how to put them together, and in another video we'll be focused on exactly how to decorate the tops. Because there are infinite ways to decorate the stocking tops, I'm going to just show you in, in the next video how to do this needlepoint pattern. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what we need to make these cookies. Um, for each of these pieces, you need a stocking shape, one stocking shape, and for this one I used a Copper Gifts cookie cutter. It's about six to eight inches tall, depending on the dimensions that you measure. I like to use a pretty big cookie cutter for this project, simply because I can stuff more candies inside at the end of the day. You'll need two of those, one for the bottom, the back of the stocking, one for the top, and you'll also need some filler pieces to give the cookie some dimension. I've got these pre-baked, but I'm gonna show you how I cut them in a moment. Um, and you can use either two filler pieces, which is enough to allow small slender candies like M&Ms and the lollipops to fit in. But if you want to get heftier candies in, you might actually use three filler pieces. Then you can fit things like these, these candies that have a bit larger dimension. Um, you may also want to cut some smaller pieces. I cut these two teardrop shapes to form a bow at the top of my cookie. And I'm going to show you also how to put those bows on so they stand up and have some relief. And for the lollipops, just some simple rounds. For both the teardrops and the rounds, I rely on a Tico cookie cutter sets. If you don't have graduated cookie cutter sets, you should really invest in them because you can get a, a lot of mileage out, the, out of them. I can do a whole host of different lollipop sizes just with this one set of rounds, for instance. And they have a similar teardrop set from which I got this teardrop cutter to make the bow. Okay, so those are the pieces that you'll need. I'm gonna move them to the side and I'm gonna show you actually how I cut out that insert because it's just a little bit um, tricky. It's not a straight cut of that cookie cutter. So I've got some pre-made, um, pre-rolled rather, gingerbread dough here. And I like to bake on the back of my cookie sheet simply because I also roll on the back of my cookie sheet. In this case, I'm gonna cut directly on the cookie sheet so I don't have to transfer this big cookie and potentially misshape it. So I've got the dough rolled about an eighth, actually an eighth of an inch thick. To make the top piece, I would just cut it out and because I'm going to be stringing it with a ribbon, I'm going to cut off that little extra loop. I don't really want that. And then just pull the excess dough off the cookie like so. Your knife can assist with this too if it's not coming up on its own. I'm baking on a silicone baking mat. You can also bake on parchment paper. Um, if you are um, cutting on a silicone baking mat, just make sure you don't cut through the mat, it's actually pretty hard to do that. But if you have a, if you bear down too hard, you potentially could. So I'm removing this excess dough. If I didn't, it would bake into the cookie and it'd be harder to remove it after baking. And there will be no waste here because I can roll up this dough and um, use it to cut out more cookies. We're just gonna mound this all up and I'd roll out if I were doing many of these, I just roll out another one to the side here and get at least two or three cookies. These are big cookies on the cookie sheet. Okay, so that would be what the top piece would look like. Um, to create this insert, and this is, again, I need a little empty spot in the middle so I actually have something to fill later. I'm just gonna take my paring knife and cut this piece out of the middle. And it doesn't have to be a perfect cut because you're not gonna see this piece at the end of the day. But you do wanna clean it out as I cleaned out the rest of the dough earlier. And keep it off the top of the cookie too. You could take a little pastry brush too and clean it up a little bit more if you wanted to. But that's basically how you cut that gingerbread piece and then I'd simply put it in the oven and bake it as I would normally bake a cookie. Let them cool completely before I decorate them. So now let's get back to the assembly of this cookie. I'm going to actually put together a stocking using the stencil top that I've already decorated. And I talk about stenciling in another video quite extensively. This red part here was stenciled the toe tips and heel tip were actually marbled, and I've got a video on marbling as well. Okay, to assemble, then you want to start with your base piece. You could actually decorate the base piece 
um, in which case I would have cut out a reverse image of the stocking and decorated that so that the cookie would view well from both sides. But in this case, I've kind of cut corners a little bit, saving a little bit of time because the holiday seasons are always rushed. And I just, I'm just going to decorate the front face of the cookie. Now, I do want it to hang, so we need a ribbon for that, correct? I've got some pre-cut ribbon here. This might be a little bit long, but you want to be gluing this ribbon in as you're assembling so that it dries into the cookie. And to glue, I'm not going to use real glue because we want this to be edible. The ribbon can be removed later. I am going to use um, royal icing. And for gluing with royal icing, you want the icing as thick as possible because then it dries faster and it's just easier to work that way so that your cookies aren't slipping around as you're assembling. So um, I'm actually going to glue to the back of this. I'm going to put two inserts in this cookie as well and just fill it with M&Ms and lollipops. So you, you see I've got my glue on the back, thick royal icing, and I've colored it to match the gingerbread. That way if any squeezes out the side, it's less likely to be seen. Oops, forgot. At this point I also want to place my ribbon in there and anchor that in place. We don't want to, after talking about that, I don't want to leave that out. I, do have, I don't want this sticking out the side, so I'm going to trim it a little bit. And then I'm going to put a little more glue on top of it too, just so the cookie has something to stick to. Let me reapply that. Okay, so we've got one in, and then the same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to put another insert in. You could fill the cookie at this point with candy, like so, but I usually fill it later. But it is good generally to test and make sure the candies you want to get in there actually clear the top of the, you know, or below the top of the cookie that they actually fit. Okay. And then the last step is just looping the ribbon over. Again, this is a little bit too long. I don't want my loop much more than a couple of inches at the top. You can make it as long as you want. But I'm going to make a shorter loop. I'm going to start by again gluing it down here. And I glue it in pretty far. That way it's less likely to slip out with the weight of the cookies because these are, these are pretty heavy. So I'll glue it down as far as I can, which is usually to this point on the stocking. And then simply um, put the top on, on top like so. Press gently. And I couldn't lift it from the stocking, the hook right now, or it would slip out. I'd have to let this dry maybe a few hours before I could safely pick it up. But while that's drying, I am going to show you how to put on the bows. Then I'm going to choose white ones because I think they're going to contrast the green a little bit better. I think I want to anchor them about there. So I'm going to put a little icing on the back of it, like so. And one I'm going to put flat. That's easy enough to do. If it's really thick, it's just going to stay there. The other one I want to be lifted up off the top a little bit. And the trick there is I just need to prop it with a little bit of paper towel. That usually does the job until it's dried. So again, I'm using a, a light colored royal icing because it's going on a light icing and I don't want it to show. And whoops, that one fell off. This one I'm going to prop with just a little bit of paper towel behind it so it'll dry in place, lift it off the top of the cookie. So I'm going to stick this guy back down. like so. And then you can come in later and stick a little M&M or a drage there at the center of the bow um, to finish it off. Um, one last thing, I did talk about filling these and I've got candies that I can put inside. Um, but I also um, want to do some lollipops. So earlier I marbled some cookies. This is a lollipalooza pattern that I talk about in my marbling video. I like to work on bubble wrap because I have decorated the top of the cookie. If there's any relief to it whatsoever, I don't want to just put it face down on a hard surface and work with it on the hard surface because then I can scrub some of the decorations off. So I do like to work on bubble wrap for that. Again, here I'm working with royal icing glue. It's super, super thick. I do talk about this quite extensively in my royal icing video. But when I talk about glue icing, I'm talking about something that clings to the back of the spoon and doesn't fall off. But I'm working with brown again because I've got um, a brown gingerbread here. And these are lollipop sticks that I got from Wilton, I believe. But you can find them anywhere online or in your local cake decorating supply house. 
And I could leave it like this, and oftentimes I do. So I'll put a little icing down to secure it. I like to put some over the top and just kind of smear it around the stick so that when I lift it up, once it's dry, that stick is less likely to pop out. Um, so that's what I've done precisely on this lollipop. And you can see this one's dried certainly a couple of hours before I can pick it up. And I can really move it around without it going anywhere. Um, you might not like the fact that it's one-sided. And if that's the case, you can take another cookie of the same size and just sandwich it around the lollipop stick like so. And you'll have uh, something that views well from both sides. So once the um, lollipop is dried, which generally is a couple of hours, you should be able to pick it up and move it around. And then all that needs to be done, same, the stocking needs to dry the same amount of time, is fill it up with candies of your choice. I'm gonna load this with M&Ms. And I, that peppermint actually fit in there too. And then stick a lollipop in to finish it off. You can also tie pretty ribbons around the lollipops if you like. I've still got this paper here because that's still drying. But that's um, the basics of putting together a stuffable stocking cookie. It's pretty easy. And at the end of the day, you've got a really showy cookie that you can hang as a decoration, give as a special favor, um, or housewarming, a party gift. In my next video, as I said, we'll talk about how to do the needlepoint pattern, which I used on this cookie, which is really impressive. It's an extension of outlining and flooding. Until then, live sweetly.